microphone's on. Okay. Um, Corey, that's a little tight. Okay. Hey, okay. Joe. Well, folks, I want to welcome you to Mr. Fobble's Celebration of Life. You stand here as uh, somebody gets to take you here as a funeral director, but also a longtime family friend. And in many ways, during a portion of my life, the Fobbles were like grandparents to me. And I remember going to one of the first apple butter festivals with the Wildmans and Jimmy and Julie, and so it's an honor to be here. We're going to take this time today to remember a man who's had a great life and has a great legacy Ken Woody, our pastor from uh, United Methodist Church up in Northridge, is going to be uh, ministering today, and then we're going to have a couple family members that are sharing. Just like me, as I'm speaking to you, while you're sharing up here at the microphone, feel free to take your mask off so we can all understand you, Jimmy, Bob, okay? And then, uh, and then we'll have our time. So thank you for being here. And we also are, we have several people that have joined online and, and uh, are able to be here virtually. Thank you. I don't normally get an introduction like that from the funeral director, so I know this is a very, while somber, still yet a very close-knit gathering of friends and family. And the Fobbles, as well as the Wildmans, are very dear to my heart as well. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life, and those who believe in me, even though they die, yet they shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Come to me, Jesus says, and I, all of you who labor and are overburdened, which I think we really feel that now more than ever, and I will give you rest. As we read from Psalm 121, lift, I lift up my eyes to the hills from whence shall my help come. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And may the Lord be praised here this day. As Rob said, I'm Reverend Ken Woody, and I am pastor at Northridge United Methodist Church. And it is my privilege and honor to be here with you. Uh, uh, the longer I'm here in Springfield, the more attached I become to families like this, because we've done this several times now, Jan. But friends, we're gathered here today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as we come to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Robert Bob Fobble. May the God whose love never fails touch our hearts this day in a way that brings comfort, hope, and the sure knowledge of the resurrection. For in dying, Christ destroyed our death, and in rising, Christ restores our life. Christ will come again. Come again in glory, as in his baptism and life Bob put on Christ, so in Christ may Bob be clothed with glory. 
Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children, and what we shall be has not yet been fully revealed. But we do know this, that when Jesus appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he truly is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ Jesus is pure. Let us pray. O oh God of love and grace, we long for your message to us that life is not over. We praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor here on this earth. We praise you for those dear to us who have now gone on to be with you. And we recall with special fondness your son Bob. We praise you for sustaining him through the years, O Lord, and we give you thanks for so graciously receiving him into your heavenly presence. We give you thanks for his devotion to his family and for his personality and talents which shared his love, for his years of hard work and his faithfulness to and love of his family and friends, we offer now our praise. And we pray this day that you will give us faith to see beyond touch and sight some sign of your heavenly kingdom. And where our vision fails, help us, O God, to trust in your love which never fails. Lord, we ask you to lift our sorrow, enable us to continue on our way as we look forward to a glad heavenly reunion. For it is through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. At this time, uh, there are many scripture verses that could be helpful to bring hope, to bring comfort, to bring peace. But one that I have used now literally hundreds of times is Psalm, one, Psalm 23, the 23rd Psalm. As my tradition has been before becoming a pastor, I learned and memorized this by the King James Version, and that's the one I choose to use here today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now there are also New Testament verses that I believe can bring us hope and bring us comfort at this time. And, and one is written by the Apostle Paul to the church at Rome. It comes from Romans chapter 8. And the Apostle Paul writes these words, who will separate us from the love of Christ Jesus? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine, nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who first loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I also feel that there's a time of comfort that comes from words from Jesus Christ himself. These words for me that I'd like to share with you come from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. For Jesus himself is speaking here, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will take you to myself. So that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. I will not leave you orphaned or abandoned. I am coming to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. 
Oh, I do not give as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Yes, we come this, this afternoon and this is a difficult day. We come to praise God for the life of one we have loved. After toiling through many, many wonderful years of life, we are now faced with the fact that Bob's spirit has left his body. And it's a rather difficult reality to wrap our hearts around our hearts. More and more, I would hope and pray during these last couple of days, we've begun to accept the fact that he's gone. And yes, we're still here. That's what hurts. We're still here. And it leaves us in a really strange situation. Things are just not right. There, there's something out of kilter. Without Bob, without Dad, without Grandpa, without Great Grandpa. Oh, one minute you're thinking or laughing us about something he did, and the next minute, ugh, it's a strange new world of tears. Why is it strange? Well, given that he was 97, many of you have not ever lived in this world without him. Perhaps all of you here this day have never lived in this world without him. So here we are. It's this mix of us, some perhaps knowing one another for a lifetime, some perhaps re being reacquainted or just meeting for the first time today. But you've all brought, been brought together because of the love you all have in common for dad, for grandpa, for great grandpa, for friend. For Bob. And we know deep down that we can't go on from this place until we've done what we came to do. And I would ask that we would pray and just take a moment to pray specifically about that. Let us pray. Gracious God, Abba Father, Papa, Papa, here we are. Your children who have gathered for the celebration of the life of one we've loved, but but we're in the midst of all this confusion, God. Our minds know that for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, but, but right now our hearts are heavy. Lord of all creation, you know we've rejoiced at a time of birth, and now we cry at a time of death, and our, our hearts have soared at a time of dancing and celebration, and now they sink. They sink in a time of mourning. Oh God, give us your comfort. Remind us that all the cycles of nature are under your control. We would ask that you would help to turn our grief into gratitude. As we do give thanks for the life of a, a daddy, a grandpa, a great grandpa, a friend. And celebrate his passage into life everlasting. For it is in the name of Jesus, our risen Savior, we pray all these things. Amen. Friends, today we come to pause in our busy daily routines for just a moment to bring closure to the fact that Bob is no longer with us. And perhaps this is also a day when we reflect not only on the, the meaning of life from Bob's perspective, but our own. When we look at the example God gives us through the gift of his only son, Jesus, perhaps we can see that the meaning of life is simply this, love. Or perhaps we can say it a little more completely, to love and to be loved. For the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Why? For God is love. In his own way, Bob knew and practiced the importance of love through the concern and help, the discipline and care that Bob knew God through love. And in the end, it's not a bad way to know God because God is love. And I believe we can give thanks that the God who created Bob and get, put him in this world 
to live in love has now received him into God's eternal kingdom. I do believe that. For God made Bob a part of his good creation and created him with a heart that reached out to others. A heart that he was willing to use to bring together his family, his friends, and so many other parts of his life. I believe Bob was in the step of the rhythm of God's creation and a step and a pattern that he truly accepted. But now it's our turn. It's our turn. A time to remember the person you knew, the person you loved, the person you cherished. Oh, death will take away a lot of things. Takes away Bob's company physically. It takes away his physical presence. It takes away our opportunities to care for his needs. And it also takes away the opportunities to be cared about by him. But there are some things that we're going to talk about briefly this afternoon, not only me but others, that death cannot take away. And the first thing that always comes to mind is that death can never take away your memories. Your memories. Your memories are a part of who you have become, having had dad, grandpa, great-grandpa, Bob, friend, as a part of your life. You all would be different than you would have been if his life and yours had never crossed. And each of you will have your own scrapbook of memories etched into your heart and mind. As we begin this time of memory remembrance, I'd like to ask Bob's grandson, Jim, to come forward and share some thoughts he has. Oh, hi, guys. You know, for uh, the last number of days, I have really struggled in uh, trying to put words together on what I wanted to say. Um, so I'll do my best this morning, and uh, I'm saying it for him. <laughs> so what a privilege it was to know Bob Fobel. And it's so strange for me to say uh, his name because he's Gramps me. My earliest memories of visiting Grandma and Grandpa's house were that every trip there for me was an adventure. Um, today, we spend countless hours, myself included, on our devices, um, playing games, uh, communicating through texts, uh, the latest and greatest TikToks and Snapchats, though I do stay away from those. Um, And time with Grandpa was different. Um, projects were hands-on. There was no, let's, you know, get together in a few hours after, after you've figured it out or something on, online. Um, from learning how to hammer nails in his workshop, I know there are a number of us here who did that. Um, his fingers probably feel okay now. <laughs> um, to helping build a canoe. Uh, I really don't have two distinct memories of that other than pictures of me helping by holding a sea clamp. Um, but I learned what that was. Um, to learning about electricity. It wasn't enough just to say in school, this is what I'm learning. It was, let's go build uh, parallel and ser series circuits with switches and light bulbs. And this is the difference, alternating current versus direct current. We were always doing something. There were no YouTube videos showing you how to fix, assemble, or install something. There was Gramps. And for me, I don't know what he didn't know that he didn't need to know, because I felt like he knew everything. He invested um, in others, in me, in a lot of us here. He served his community, his friends, Historical Society, the Apple Butter Festival, his, his Enid Mound tax service. He poured into his family. Barbecues were not sitting around 
not talking. We were enjoying each other's company, making homemade ice cream, playing golf, frisbee golf, uh, and having contests on the stilts. I saw some pictures, Bob. That was, uh, that was great. I think one of the greatest reasons Gramps was able to live his life in this way was due to a big factor, and that I believe Grandpa was content. And that's something I think we all struggle with at times. Um, but I think he was able to pour himself into all of us because he was content. That's not to say he didn't have goals or strive to do something well. In fact, he, he oftentimes said, and I have a, a little uh, plaque that he gave me when I graduated from Ohio State. He said, one of the greatest joys in life comes from doing a job well. Um, in the Old Testament, out of the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 13, paraphrases and it tells us that finding satisfaction in our work is truly a gift from God. Um, and if Gramps is any example of that, finding satisfaction in work, um, then he too was a gift of God to each of us. So that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, in my conversations with Jan and with Julie, one of the consistent attributes of Dad, of Bob, was his ability and willingness, and I think Jim started to touch on it, on his willing and ability to always be there, to be there for his family. Yes, I think, Jim, you're absolutely right. He could fix almost anything. And he didn't necessarily need to go back and find out how to do it. <laughs> he just knew it. And he could be counted on to help in taking care of his family as far as that extension went. A huge part of Bob's life that it has to have included his beloved wife, who we were two years ago doing about the same thing. For Bob and Lois's relationship, I, just as a reminder to bring back some of those memories, they, they be, their relationship began at Boston High School in Indiana, and, and it was one of those small towns, and part of who Bob was was being raised in a small school situation. Bob's family was on the farm. Lois's family lived in town. And Lois's dad worked for, for, for what was going on with Indiana Bell. Those were some of the things that kept the numerous telephones going on in his house. Back then, they both were developing a work ethic that helped them through the rough times and flowed through their family life together. As you may remember or have been told, they became high school sweethearts the locket that Lois was interned with was given to her by, by Daddy, by Bob, before their senior prom. Inside, there was a picture of the two of them. Soon after their high school graduation, yes, they married. A marriage that lasted over 75 years. To me, that seems incredible. Admittedly, life was rather tough in the beginning, living in a one-room place, but there was no doubt that their marriage was a blessed one. Dad and Mom ended up then living in Enon, Ohio, and for Dad, this was the place he could raise and love his family. Mom and Dad were part of the foundation upon which the Enon Apple, Apple Butter Festival was built 40 years ago. From the beginning of a single kettle of apple butter from Indian Mount Apples to the two-day event, it has become, unfortunately suspended this year, but has become, Dad was the co-founder of that event. As Mom was considered the apple butter queen, Bob was considered the apple butter king. 
Dad was also involved in several organizations, including being the driving force behind the creation of the Enon Community Historical Society. And he was also an active member in the Enon United Methodist Church, and then later in their moving to, Spr to Northridge in the Northridge United Methodist Church. And while Bob's life is full of many memories, it was shared with me that Bob did have perhaps one regret, that he never made it to college. However, given the timing of his life, Bob being proficient in his typing skills provided him an opportunity to serve in World War II in a way that many others did not have an opportunity to do. Jan shared with me that Daddy would receive vegetable and flower seeds from people back in the States while serving in Tinian Island in the Pacific Ocean. And Bob would then take those seeds and he would use them. He didn't just throw them away. He used them to assist in growing a vegetable and flower garden of which the vegetables would be used to feed the troops stationed there. Now, a little bit of history here. Tinian Island was the launching point for the atomic bomb attacks on Japan. And Bob, working in the office the morning of the first attack, was possibly the first person to read via the teletype message, Bomb Away. After the war, Bob was a dedicated dad and grandpa and great-grandpa, and as his granddaughter Julie said, Grandpa was the one who supported and loved his family, whether it was giving tractor rides around the yard or helping ra allowing me to help raise the flag or even, even helping his granddaughter Julie write her graduation speech. Grandpa was there. No, death cannot. We, we, we know that death cannot take our memories, and whether that's just simply remembering him eating his cheese at crackers or, like Jim was alluding, his woodworking projects. Because Dad had the talent to put together not just a small quilt stand, but wooden furniture, wooden toys, wall hangings, you name it, he probably at least attempted it. No, death cannot take away our memories, but death can also not take away our love. Bob and Lois had a special bond of love, whether it was mom receiving a box of chocolates from dad or simply their natural ability to automatically hold hands. They were bound together by love. And I know you can think of ways in which Bob expressed his love and concern for you and for others. And over the next few days, perhaps even weeks, I hope that you would reflect on the ways in which you love him and why you love him. And remember, never ever forget that this kind of love lives on forever. It doesn't stop simply because a person has died. In fact, sometimes the one we love becomes even dearer and closer to us in death than they were in life. No, death cannot take away our love and death cannot take away our faith. I believe that Bob held a deep and abiding faith and trust in the one who created it all. I believe that we can now rejoice this day that Bob's faith can now grow in the direct presence of God himself. Oh, it takes away our, his physical presence, but it does not take away his faith or our faith. And we also have to remember death cannot take away hope. Hope is what drives each and every one of us. And I believe, even to his last breath, Bob was taking hope with him. Hope of seeing his beloved Lois again. Hope of knowing the transition from this life to the next is a part of who we are. Because he kept looking for meaning and purpose as long as he physically could. No, death cannot take away our memories, our love, our faith, our hope. So what would Bob want to hear? His son Bob's going to share with us what I believe he wants to hear. And as we do this, we know that God is with us. 
I would ask you would draw your attention to his son, Bob. Thank you, Pastor. Well, who would have thought that Dad would have made it this long after Mom passed away? Mom's probably upset that it took Dad so long to join her. January 31st, 1923, that's when it all started. My dad was born. He graduated from Boston High School in Boston, Indiana on April 23rd, 1941. He married the love of his life, my mom, Lois Bevins, on January 1st, 1942. That was a marriage that lasted 76 years. And that taught us that it means to be, what it means to be a great husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. Dad was a farmer at heart. His plan was to get a college degree in agriculture and farming, and his father, as his father and grandfather did. However, World War II was underway, and instead of farming, Dad went to serve our country. During his career, the Army had offered him the opportunity to go to officer candidate school, along with several others. For him, it was a prestigious offer for someone not having a college degree. He knew that to do this, he would have to sign up for extended service. He felt a compelling responsibility to be with his family. At that time, it was just me and mom. So he turned down this honor so he could be with his family sooner. The others that signed up, okay, the next day, every one of them was sent and shipped out to the Battle of the Bulge. Now, the Battle of the Bulge, we lost more than 19,275 uh, servicemen were killed. It was the biggest loss of any of the battles of World War II. 23,554 were missing or taken prisoner. Most never came home. I believe because he put his family first and turned down that promotion, he came home. You see, I believe God had other plans for him and the journey began. My dad, always serving family, God, and country. Dad was quite a poet. He wrote a lot. He even wrote poetry to mom while aboard ship in the Pacific Ocean. Most are in the book, The History of Family of Father. Here's just one of those poems that provides insight to his success. Success. Success is always near at hand, yet so far away. If you have the strength to grasp it, you'll be the man someday. Put your shoulder to the wheel, push it with your mind, be true friend to everyone, for two friends are hard to find. The fields of experience are many, you can't cover them all, so be ready to learn a lesson, even from the small. Let no obstacles block your path, let nothing bar your way. If you but keep these facts in mind, you will succeed someday. Robert Fobble, 1939. Again, putting his family first when he came out of the service, he went to work at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base as he knew that would be better for the family than farming. He was a very positive person and he instilled that into us kids, teaching us that if you believe it, anything is possible. My dad always making sacrifices for others. The next several years were tough times for our country and our family. Dad was always busy, hard at work, always on the go, but never too busy to make time for us kids. At that time, we lived on base housing, had no car, and Dad would walk, or should I say jog, to work every day. I remember one morning I was at the sandbox, putting sand into a pincushion that Mom had made. Dad came jogging by, but he stopped, and he showed me how to get just the right sand, and then he jogged off to work. I watched him setting that example every day, rain or shine. My dad, always busy and hard at work, but always taking time to serve his love with those around him. 
Soon we were able to buy a small home in Frayne Avenue in Fairborn, Ohio. We were soon a family of five, with the addition of my sister Janice and then Karen four years later. Even though it was a small house with no business, hey, that didn't stop Dad. He hand dug a basement one shovel at a time, and he threw the dirt out a window and then moved it again. He then mixed concrete and made cement blocks one at a time and then laid up the walls. By him doing this, it meant we could put in a furnace and the family could be warm. My dad, always having an extreme capacity to work for his family. Soon we moved to Enon, Ohio, thanks to dad's success in his career at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. We were able to build a new home. Dad nicknamed it Bell Lodge. I'm not sure where it came up with that name, but knowing Dad, there was a special meaning that would have meant something to him and Mom. Dad and my grandfather and I did all the electrical wiring for our new home, and on November the 11th, 1953, we moved into Bell Lodge as it was printed on the blueprint located at One Meadow Lane in Ohio. My dad, still thinking of his family. My dad was always there when we needed him. I was turning 16. Friends had motor scooters and mopeds. I went to my dad and I told him I had saved the money and I wanted to buy a motor scooter. All he said was, why not a car? I will help you find one. Well, and that, it will also be much safer. We found one thanks to dad and I was proud owner of a Crosley. I bought it for $150. And if you're too young to know what a Crosley is, just Google it. (laughs) Dad drove it home as I was not yet 16, and together we rebuilt that car. He knew all the lessons I would learn by doing that. My dad, always there for us kids. Dad always enjoyed fun times. I was in high school, and my sisters were right behind me. Dad knew the value of family and was always coming up with things we could do together. Croquet badminton, softball, tag, catching lightning bugs, jarts, horseshoes, and even axe throwing, to name a few. These were family evening and weekend events, simple things for simple times. My dad, always there for the events and the fun times. He was always expanding his horizons with risky ventures, like opening a soda shop ice cream parlor in Cambridge, Indiana, or starting a mail order, a company calling it BNL Enterprises, selling real estate, starting Enon Mountain Tax Service. All these vent- ventures showed us how he handled setbacks and how it could be make us stronger. He was a doer who always said, don't put anything off that you can do today. Whenever I would say, I can't do that, he would reply, can't, died in the cornfield. 22 years ago. (laughs) That thought made me never waste a day and to believe in myself. My dad tried all these ventures and others for the family and our future. He always put himself last. Dad was always giving for many years. Dad always was thinking of his community, giving his time and energy to help others at the Enon Methodist Church and chairman of the Enon Bicentennial Celebration. He helped relocate the Enon Log Cabin near the Adena Mound. He was an Enon City Council. And on July 7, 1977, Dad helped organize the Enon Historical Society. One year later, October 14, 1978, he started the Enon Apple Butter Festival that's still going strong today. My dad, always thinking of others and his community. I can still see Mom reaching over and holding Dad's hand, especially in their later years. And I could not help but notice Dad's smile as their hands came together. He showed us that love isn't what you say, it's what you do. He had so many talents and qualities that he passed on to those around him. Dad, you will be missed. You served your family, your church, your country, your community, and your friends. Dad, by just being yourself, you have left a great legacy of honesty, decency, kindness, and the greatest father a daughter or son could have. But dad, 
thank you for your greatest le legacy. It's your love for your family that will always be with us forever. We love you, Dad, and we hope Mom is now reaching out to grasp your hand again and welcoming you to your new home. What will it be like when my pain is gone and all the worries of this world just fade away? What will it be like when you call my name in that moment when I see you face to face? I'm waiting.
perhaps truer words could not have been spoken. Thank you, Bob. Yes, I think it's quite evident. The meaning of life is love, a meaning that we can make our own as we remember Bob, as we remember Dad, as we remember Daddy, as we remember Gramps, Grandpa, Great Grandpa, but also seek to serve God and become all that God wants us to be. Let us pray. God of love, we thank you for everything with which you have blessed us even to this day, for the gift of joy and days of health and strength, and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends and for our place with all who have faithfully lived and now have died. And we do thank you for your child, Bob, who by his love and dedication to his family showed us all how to be about the business which God created us for. Thank you for all the stages of our lives, but above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us this very day. For we pray this all in his name. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, diminished by the absence of a cherished brother in Christ, I charge you nonetheless to get on with your lives with undiminished faith, hope, and love. Journey on with any fear of falling and without any pretense about your need for God's grace and mercy. Journey on with wonderful memories, secure in the hope that when your time comes, the love of God will be sufficient for your every need. Amen. Folks, this concludes our time. We're going to go ahead and give you an opportunity to pass by Bob's casket and the family. And then once you've done that, if you would go onto your cars for procession to the cemeteries, cemetery, excuse me. Those of you that are going to be pallbearers, if you could wait in the hallway, uh, we'll give you instruction following that. Thank you. Look at you, you can do all.